how much power are you really going to need for AMD's new 6800 XT and 6900 XT? Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So according to AMD, both the 6800 XT and 6900 XT have a TBP of 300 watts, yet in the case of the 6900 XT, it calls for an 850 watt power supply, while the 6800 XT only calls for a 750 watt power supply, leading many people to ask the question, can my 650 watt power supply sneak by, and if not, how much do I really need? And in order to answer that question, we're going to go on over to the classic power supply calculator website and put together two different systems, one being a worst case scenario and one being a best case scenario in terms of the amount of power draw you would expect out of them to help you figure out how much your particular system may need if you slap a 6800 XT or 6900 XT graphics card inside of it. Now one thing I want to mention before we go ahead and look at these two different systems is that the power supply calculator website does kind of show you these systems at the full power draw or at least close to the full power draw so the numbers that you're going to see out of these websites are probably going to be a little bit unrealistically high compared to just running a game but you know what that's probably for the best because most power supplies are not quite as efficient when they're under the full load and on top of that you just never know what you're going to do with your PC so it's probably a little bit better to overshoot by a bit instead of you know get a power supply that's just barely enough and then on top of that you know you should really go ahead and go onto this website yourself and plug in your exact system and what types of overclocks you're doing to get the most accurate representation of how much power you're going to need for your specific system but in any case let's go ahead and take a look at these two different systems so starting off with the first system here this will have an r5 3600 cpu at stock clock so no overclocking there it will have two 8 gigabyte ddr4 sticks a 6800 xt running at stock one m.2 ssd and then two sata ssds a standard keyboard and mouse and it will be using the box cooler coming with the r5 3600 and it will have four 120 millimeter fans so it's a pretty standard system you know no overclocks going on whatsoever and it, this should draw basically the least amount of power out of the two systems and this system for the total power draw ends up drawing 506 watts at least according to the power supply calculator website and so you know looking at these numbers here what I can tell you is that essentially I would recommend an absolute minimum of a 650 watt power supply for this type of a system yeah you could probably get by with a little bit less especially if you're going to be under volting things or something like that or maybe you even have a more power efficient CPU but you know it's best to have a little bit of overhead because you might slap in like a sound card later Later on or DVD drive or who knows what or maybe you'll get into overclocking a little bit so it's best to have a little bit of headroom there and in all reality the 750 watts that AMD recommends would probably be a better choice for a system like this because again it gives you just a whole lot of expandability options and it's best to have a little bit too much than not quite enough but if you are someone sitting on a 650 watt power supply and you have a similar system to this and you're going to be replacing your current graphics card with a 6800 XT well yeah I think for the most part you should probably be able to sneak by with the 650 watt power supply now personally I wouldn't do it I'd get at least a 750 watt power supply but again you probably could now moving on to that second system here this one will have a Threadripper 3970X processor and it will be overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz at 1.28 volts and yes I know this might be a little bit unrealistic and also on top of that don't take any of the voltages or clock speeds here as some sort of overclocking guide that's definitely not what this is this is just me trying to boost up the power of this chip to get you know a higher uh, wattage draw out of it to get a worst case scenario but you know what there might be some people out there running a 3970X, so I'm going to throw this build in there. And it has four 8 gigabyte DDR4 sticks, a 6900 XE, which is not running at stock. It's overclocked to 2.4 gigahertz with a 10% increase to the voltage and a mild memory overclock as well. So, you know, that's going to draw quite a bit as, of power as well. Probably, you know, close. I think it comes closer to around 370 watts, which is a lot more than the 300 watts that it runs at stock. And then uh, for the storage here, it will have two M.2 two SSDs, four SATA SSDs, a sound card, a gaming keyboard and mouse, a fan controller, 10 140 millimeter fans, and a Kraken X62 water cooler for that CPU because you know what? You know, running an overclock 3970X, not only do you not get a stock cooler with that CPU, I believe, but on top of that, you definitely wouldn't want to use it. So overall, this build actually ends up coming to 984 watts, which is a significant increase over that last system, which only drew 506 watts. 
and you might be asking yourself, you know, where's all that wattage coming from? And like I mentioned earlier, the uh, 6900 XT, while it does draw a lot of power, it, it comes in at around, I think, somewhere around 370 watts, which means that the 3970X is probably drawing, you know, a little closer to 500 watts on its own when you overclock that thing. Maybe a little bit less, you know, but in any case, that's a whole lot of power coming from the CPU, and it just goes to show you how, you know, changing your CPU and the amount of RAM that you have and the type of storage that you're using can actually have a significant uh, increase or decrease in the amount of power that you're drawing. And so it's important to know what exact type of components you have in your own personal system to get the most accurate results. But yeah, in this worst case scenario build, if you're drawing around 984 watts for your system, you know, yeah. I don't think even a thousand watts would you'd be safe. I think you'd need at least a 1200 watt power supply and potentially even more than that. But I think you could get by with a 1200 watt power supply. That definitely gives you enough room for a little more expansion in the future, though I'm not exactly sure what you would put in there. Uh, if you're throwing a second graphics card in there for some reason, then you're going to need an even bigger power supply. So that's not really going to be an option. And you've already got pretty much all the fans you could possibly fit, maybe a little bit more storage. But yeah, 1200 watts, it would probably do you for this rig. And I don't think you would need any more than that but you know it just goes to show you between these two different systems you can go from you know needing probably at least a 650 watt power supply to needing probably at least a 1200 watt power supply so there's a lot of difference there but you know to circle back around and answer that original question is a 650 watt power supply going to be enough for the 6800 xt and 6900 xt and my thoughts on this are essentially yeah i think it will for most people you probably could with a pretty minimalistic system if you're not going to be overclocking get by with the 650 watt power supply but you know some of these graphics cards have peak loads that are they spike the power a little bit higher than maybe even they say on the box so yes it while it might be possible to get by with 650 watt and you're certainly welcome to try and risk it yourself i personally wouldn't do it i would get at least a 750 watt power supply for both the 6800 xt and 6900 xt because while the 6900 xt might have you know slightly higher power draw overall on average we'll have to wait and see on that we don't know for sure yet it's it's very likely that those two cards at stock will draw very similar amounts of power. So if 750 watts should be more than enough for a 6800 XT, well then it should be more than enough for a 6900 XT in a minimalistic system as well. But you know what? If you want to be on the safe side and you want to get more power, you know, go ahead and do so. There's no reason not to get more power, and it's definitely the safest way to go. If I mean, if you want to get an 850 watt power supply, 1000 watt power supply, it's best to have too much than not quite enough. I know that that pretty much applies to life in general. So I, it certainly applies here, especially when you consider the fact that, you know, when you have a power supply running at like 80% usage, 80% load, it's definitely a lot more efficient than if you have it running at like 95% load. So, you know, between expandability and efficiency, I, I really think you're better off getting more than you need. But if you just absolutely can't budget more than a 650 watt power supply, you could probably get by with it and you're certainly free to try, but don't, if it doesn't end up working and you end up having your system shut down or something, you know, don't, don't come to me and say, Hey, it's your fault. You know, I, I've given you the tools. I've given you my opinion that while it's pro certainly possible, you probably shouldn't do it. And I, I'd probably get a little bit higher. It's like 750 Watts or greater if, if I were you, but Hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the power supply requirements of the 6,800 XT and 6,900 XT? Do you think you can get by with 650 Watts or do you think you should have a much larger your power supply. I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.